Okay, so today, guys, I want to talk about this um, Nigerian Student Express, you know, program. I don't know how many people are using this program, to be honest with you, and how often is the um, Canadian government responding to this program? Because, I mean, it's supposed to be a fast track to submitting your study permit, right? And um, so I'm just kind of curious as to if um, they're actually doing this, but it looks like they are not really fast because this process is meant to take um uh 20 days it's similar to the sds um for the filipinos and you know the other asian countries so this is specifically um created for nigerians who are submitting their study permit application and of course for you to do that um there are certain um criteria you have to um, meet, which we'll also discuss and then also discuss at length that's what the Canadian government is doing about the program, which they said it was supposed to help um, fast track uh, study permit application. Okay, before we go into it, if this is your first time of coming onto my channel, hey, you are the right place, please. Thank you so much for stopping by. Do not go anywhere. Watch, finish uh, this video with me. And please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Turn on the notification button so you can know whenever I drop a video, okay? And then for my return subscribers, oh, <laughs> I'm so dramatic. Thank you so much, guys, uh, for supporting me so far. God bless you all. Uh, continue to share with your loved ones as well. Turn on the notification button as well so you can know whenever I drop a video so today i'm just like uh again we'll be talking about um, the nigerian student um express program which was launched and um what the government is doing what the government of canada is doing about it to make sure that this is actually um going mm -hmm. as planned okay and i'll be looking at some policies or some reviews or some um, updates that came out recently about this program okay and i also will be sharing about the uh, requirements to be able to, you know, to submit our application through this program. Okay, so without wasting much of our time, let's just get started. Okay, welcome back, guys. Yeah, so I said we'll be talking about the um, Nigerian... Um, student express so let me just um, take you guys here so you see what i'm talking about this is an article uh, all the articles i'll be using i'm going to put in them in the description um, below so you can have access to it if you want to go you know um more into details with it okay so this um this is a recent um article here it said that c-i-i-m-m is an integral government um, committee that studies matters of immigration and citizenship in Canada. They have oversight over IRCC. IRCC is the body that actually uh, is in charge of all application, right, or anything immigration, and monitor the federal multiculturalism policy. The CIMM report was written to address the fact that the fact that while Canada is a global leader in attracting international students, some students may be placed in disadvantageous and vulnerable situation. I'm like stressing that due to several factors that can be addressed by IRCC. Really? Mm -hmm. So the report, this is CIMM report that, you know, stating what they sent to IRCC and they want IRCC to respond, right? So the report focused on three main objective in relation to international students. They're attracting international students to study in Canada, ensuring equity in, 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 international, in the international student program and improving service and communication for international students in the study permit and immigration process. We all agree with me that a lot of people from Africa have been receiving a lot of rejection rate, right? So I don't really understand what's going on. Even with this end, uh, the Nigerian Student Express, whatever it is that was brought up. So I really don't understand why um, there is so much rejection. The IRCC response focused on measures that can be taken and are already in place to aid in these three objectives, covering each individual with the aim of reducing vulnerability and aiding international students to permit to permit application study and settlement process in Canada. We all agree that Canada is saying that they need people, they need people, right? And if you need people, when people apply and genuinely apply, I expect that, I mean, some rationale that you are putting should be, you know, um, used 
accordingly. So it shouldn't, I mean, the rejection rate is just, just too much. It's just too much. You can't say you're attracting international students and they keep applying and then they, they are getting rejected. So I'm so happy that CIMM um, is getting involved and they, are, they wrote um, IRCC and hopefully we start seeing uh, a change in the trend of things. So if you are the type that have um, submitted an application and you've been rejected maybe a couple of times, now is the best time for you to actually get your documents again get a school and then apply again. Because since people are actually, I mean, the body is now looking into it to see why this is happening. And then, you know, so I think it's a good time for you all out there that have been rejected before to so start again, okay? Start again, you know, and um, you know, hopefully you will get it this time around. Of course, if you have all documentations complete and you are very um, by the books, so um, the government recognized that from 2022 to 2023, the number of study permit orders is forecasted to rise to approximately 753, of course, international students, while acknowledging that the CIMM consigned that despite increases, application from certain countries and population are not given adequate consideration by the department. Thank you so much, CIMM. That's a very good insight out there. So now... Um, IRCC has responded back and they said um, they will be um, exploring the uh, expansion of the S SDS, which is similar to the NSC that the Nigerian did, that they were, that was uh, created for Nigerians to submit their own application in a short period, in a sh very short period, right? It's the same thing, like, you know, to fast track uh, this stream to, in obtaining a um, study permit, specifically for Asian, African, and French-speaking countries. So hopefully it starts working in our favor right now. So guys, please, if you have, if you are giving up on Canada, I think it's, now is the best time for you to go start applying for that school again and get your study permits rolling. IRCC has said that they would want to maintain, they want to maintain and reassess the scope of the Nigerian Student Express um, program, you know, the stream, because the study permits stream created to aid students applying from Nigeria, specifically at Nigeria, mm -hmm. right? So they'll be looking at this so because they want to explore how best to promote the transition of permanent residence for international students, and particularly those with the skills and experience and language levels necessary to succeed in Canada. So yeah, looks like they are doing something about it. So now better than before is the best time for you all to um, get your documents in. But what and what do you really need? I'm just going to go through it. I'm sure many of you know about the SCE, NSE, which is a Nigerian Student Express um, stream. But let's just go through it so that we can, those that don't know, will know how to go about it, okay? Basically, all you need is, number one, you need to make sure that you have, um, you have an admission offer from a school, a public funded school, uh, and that's that public funded school has a DLI that's the designated learning uh, institution number. It's very important. Any school that is um, bringing in an international student must have a DLI. Okay, so you have that. And the next thing is, for most of you, you must have an IELTS. So, uh, but it's not that it has to be high. I mean, you just have the CL CLB and that's the Canadian Learning uh, Benchmark Seven, which is six 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 in all. Uh, minimum the minimum you should have and um, it doesn't have to be academic it can be general so if you have that that's a good one and then you should also have um, my bank statement um, not it's not like a statement it's, you know you, you just go to your banks in Nigeria when you go to your bank you'd um, you tell them that you need um, my bank certificate and then they would issue that for you on that bank certificate there's a there's a pin on it and then that pin is what the uh, ILCC will use to check if you actually have that money but the money that should be in your account for that stuff should be at least a minimum of 30,000 okay 30,000 Canadian dollars because that would um show for your t-shirt and for your living expense, okay? So yeah, you you should have that. And then the usually they will ask you that you have that my bank statement 
uh, my bank certificate when when they are looking at it, it should be like a 12 month. I mean, those banks that are involved will know how to go about it. It should be for um 12, it should be for 12 month statement kind of thing. They will show to show on the this thing because you can see they will just generate it for you, and then it's the code that you'd have to send to IRCC when you're uploading your form. Okay. So basically that's all that's about it. And then you'd be getting you are you ought to be getting like a response from IRCC within 20 days. So that is why that stream is how they just to make uh just to make room for a faster processing of the study permit. So if you have if you are not aware of that and uh, you are running late, especially if you didn't get your admission on time and um, you are running late, you should try and use the um, Nigerian Student Express stream. is uh, a lot faster and um, yeah, to save you a whole lot of uh, stress and time that most people are going through. And the good thing now is that they are looking into it, um, you know, revisiting it, if they have not been, you know, dishing out the study permits within 20 days. So they are looking into it now. And it's a very good timing for you all out there that uh, may want to take this opportunity. Okay. So that's what I have for you guys today. And if you are new to it, you don't know about it, here you have, you've heard about it today. So take advantage of it. Do not waste uh, much of your time. Study route is one of the best ways to actually come into Canada. You give you peace of mind. And I know it's more ex it's a lot expensive compared to others, but I think it's still better because right now Canada is looking at ways to attract more international students, seeking at ways where they can increase the um, processing time faster. And so NSC is one of the best ways you can use to come in faster. And then they're also looking at how they can transition international students to getting their permanent residence. So yeah, guys, believe it or not, I think uh, coming to through school is one of the best ways to still get in. So that's it for today, guys. If I if you learned one or two things, uh, I think um please uh, you should um give my video a thumbs up, like, share, comment, comment, guys, please, and then subscribe, please. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. I'll see you in the next video, and it's bye for me. Until next time, bye.